Friends, roadies, countrymen, and all listeners far and wide in this beautiful world, this is John Edmund podcasting out around the globe from my base in the Limpopo province of South Africa. This month, I've been talking about the importance of looking after our ecosystems, animals, and the world in general, and the release of my album, Eco Cry for the Planet. On it are some great sound effects, introduction by the legendary voice of Peter Lotus, and background stories of the 10 songs on conservation. The song Love for Life describes an amazing ecosystem in South Africa and how the song came about. In 1979, I was commissioned by the South African Broadcasting Corporation to write a song for a documentary conservation film. It was called The Eastern Lakes with the subtitle of Paradise Retained. It was about the St. Lucia Greater Wetland Park, also known now as Isimangaliso Wetland Park, and how conservationists have tried to protect this pristine area. It is a 220-kilometer part of the coastline of KwaZulu-Natal. St. Lucia was originally named Santa Lucia by a Portuguese navigator and cartographer called Manuel Pistrello on the 13th of December 1575 on the day of the Feast of St. Lucy when he discovered the lakes and estuary. He also drew a map of the east coast of southern Africa. This area was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999 and Nelson Mandela was a guest of honor at its unveiling. UNESCO stands for United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which is a specialized agency of the United Nations aimed at promoting world peace and security through international cooperation in education, arts, sciences and culture. This site was so declared because it has five ecosystems with so many species of plants, animals and birds that coexist in its beautiful diversity. As a matter of fact, there are about 6,500 different species there and out of these, nearly 500 are listed as threatened. Within the five ecosystems, there are long sandy beaches, coastal dunes, lake systems, swamps and wetlands providing habitat for a wide range of species. These species occur in the sea, wetlands and in the surrounding savanna. On the beaches there are large numbers of nesting turtles and from those beaches spectacular sea life can be spotted like whales, dolphins and sharks. The sediments carried by the Agalis current are stopped in the canyons of the continental shelves giving crystal clear waters that encourage the development of coral reefs. But in spite of its size, beauty and diversity, it is a very delicate part of our precious world. A major threat to much of the area is the damage to the hydrology and salinity of the wetland system. The balance of the salinity of the water is key. The reduction of the normal freshwater supply was caused by agriculture. Agriculture taking a lot of the water away before it got into the, into the lake. The area is always threatened by something, like the possibility of the Umfulosi River bursting into the lake, causing sediments and the bursting of the sandbar, which, if it bursts, will allow excessive seawater coming into the lake. In the past, the system has stood up to natural droughts and floods, but excessive droughts and floods caused by global warming could destroy it beyond recovery. There are other human pressures like land claims, excessive tourism and over-exploitation of fishing. Other disasters have been brought on by humans, like the introduction of invasive plants and the danger of oil spills. I refer to this in my song because in 1971, The ship called the Waira spilled oil at Cape Agullis. There were also other oil spills around the southern African coast. Red flags went up when an oil tanker was grounded 
near the park in 2002. Thankfully, it didn't break up and there was no oil spilled. And now the story of my journey as a singer-songwriter and how I got bitten by the nature conservation bug. For that has been with me for nearly 80 years. It was in 1945, just after the Second World War, that my mother had to go to Edinburgh in Scotland for heart treatment. Her stay there was for two years. My father returned to work in Rhodesia. So I had to attend school and stayed with my aunt in Scotland. For an eight-year-old Rhodesian boy, it was a culture shock to which I adapted and enjoyed. I befriended a boy called Willie Brown, whose father was the gamekeeper of a private, beautifully wooded estate outside Edinburgh called Ravelston. Willie and I were on the same page regarding birds and wildlife and we had exclusive traversing rights over this enclave of Scottish wildlife. With permission, we formed what we called our nature club. Four boys only were allowed to join. This is where it all began. On my return to Africa, I continued with my passion for the great outdoors. My career as a singer-songwriter only began at a later stage when I was a soldier on the Congo border in 1960 during the unrest in that area. The songs I wrote were naturally of a military or historical nature, the first one being the Shangani Patrol. Nevertheless, my first songs about conservation were to come. The first one was The Go Away Bird in 1967, focusing on poaching and uncontrolled hunting. The song Did You Ever See a Kudu Cry I wrote in 1974. It was my first awakening about forest fires, drought and poaching. Since then, I've written songs about the great outdoors, and my first album was called Wild and Beautiful and Free. It was the brainchild of a man called Robin Taylor, a record company executive, who was also a passionate conservationist. The songs about saving animals from extinction and persecution, rhino poaching, the beauty of the great outdoors, and the cycle of nature touching on climate change. All my artist royalties from the sale of this album were donated to the Elephant and Rhino Foundation and royalties from the song Jock of the Bushveld went to the Percy Fitzpatrick Memorial Trust. Some of these songs caught the attention of highly qualified custodians of wildlife in places like Kruger Park. This opened the door for Teresa, my wife and myself to be hosted with, by people like Dr. Ian White and Dr. Eddie Young in this unique environment. We were also invited to play at two international game ranger conventions. And so the beginning from Ravelston Estate has culminated in, together with new songs, the revival of some of the songs about subjects and climate events that have occurred since 1945. Then in later years, I became aware of the effects that the human footprint was making in the environment. So here, folks, is my offering of a concept called Eco Cry for the Planet. And so, folks, we come to nearly the end of another month. And as the retail world always says, only so many days till Christmas. I can't wait till next week to bring you more subjects that I hope you'll be interested in. In the meantime, I'd like to remind you to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and look at the many videos that have been made about some of my songs. Also keep a lookout on my website and if you fancy any of the songs or albums, they're available from my website as hard copies or downloads from most popular music platforms. With that, it's greetings around the world from Africa. Wishing you everything that is good with the world. Svakanaka.